Hello fellow investor, in this video I want to talk about three REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, which I consider cheap at the moment. To decide if a REIT is cheap or not, I use three criteria. So I will analyze these three companies across three different criteria. First one, you need to be a dividend aristocrat with at least 15 year or consecutive dividend increase. This is very important for me because it shows that the company have a strong dividend policy and have a management who is strongly committed to deliver year by year an increase of dividend to their shareholder. Second criteria, dividend yield must be higher than the five year average. This will give a picture of a company that at the moment is a little bit underpriced, but at the same time, we want that this dividend is safe. This is why the third criteria is the payout ratio must be lower than 80%. Payout ratio gives us the idea if the dividend is safe, if the company has enough cash to pay the dividend. When we talk about payout ratio for the REIT industry, we don't need to take the payout ratio that comes from the earnings because earnings are not the correct metrics to check in case of the REITs. We need to check the AFFO, which stands for Adjust Fund from Operation. This is a much more solid information that gives us the idea of how much cash the company really have on hand from the operation and the payout ratio calculated with that will give us the picture if the company have for real enough cash to pay the dividend. 80% is my bar, anything higher than 80% I consider a little bit too risky. As usual, timestamp into the description. If you didn't subscribe to the channel, please do it because it helps a lot. And let's start with the first read. If you follow me on YouTube, you know that uh, I love to talk about this stock. I own this stock for many years, and this is honestly my favorite read of all time. But if you are not familiar with SexX, let's take a look at the company presentation. This was uh, released in November 2022, link in the description. We are talking about a company who owns 253 apartment community, which translate in more than 62,000 different uh, apartments. So this is a residential REIT, they rent out apartments basically. And the market where Essex operate is only the West Coast, dividing 40% of the apartment in the area of North California, 52, 42% of them in the area of South California, and 18% in the area of Seattle. Why this choice is because the typical tenant of Essex are a person who work in the tech industry. Essex is a company, is a REIT, but is strongly, strongly connected with the tech industry. And the fact that the company performed so good in the past year is because all the tech industry performed so good as well. Uh, number of people working in the tech industry increased, salary increased. And if we take a look at the type of apartment that they have, these are the map of the uh, biggest area where they have the apartment. We are talking about premium property because the average rental rate is $2,500 a month which is anyway in line with the area, but uh, you know, quite expensive areas. So let's check now if Essex satisfy my criteria. First of all, starting with the status, is this a dividend aristocrat? The answer is yes. If we go in Coifin, this is the dividend scorecard of Essex. We see that the company increased the dividend for 19 years consecutively. Honestly, I think this data is wrong because I believe that is uh, almost 28 years. There is probably something wrong in the data collection of Coifin, but anyway, this is higher than 15 years of dividend increase, which was my bare minimum target. We see that the annualized grow, uh, if we go back to the 10 year grow this 7%, which is pretty good. And the actual dividend yield or 4.10% is much higher than the last five year average. This is a strong sign to tell us that the company is undervalued right now. But to understand if the dividend is safe, we need to check the payout ratio. Not this one, as you can see, it's 155% payout ratio, which will give us the idea that the company is in deep shit because they need to cut the dividend. But when we check about REITs, we need to check the payout ratio done checking the adjusted fund from operation. So we go into Seeking Alpha because this information, unfortunately, is not available in Coifin. And under the AFFO, adjusted fund from operation payout ratio, we see that we are talking about 70%, which is much lower than my target, which was 80%. 
and it's even lower than the sector median, which is our co all other company in the same industry, which is 73%. So the payout ratio is quite low. I consider this company cheap right now, and the business is super safe from my point of view. This is why as soon as I have some money, when they pay me the dividend or when I get some extra cash, I increase a little bit my position, I increase my number of shares because I really believe in this business. So I think it will uh, is well positioned for the future. And right now the price is quite low. I believe this company doesn't need any presentation. If you are a dividend investor, or anyway, if you look into the dividend community, everybody knows this company, Realty Income. Uh, not because it's a extremely successful business, but because uh, it's one of the few REIT that pay the dividend on a monthly basis. So you don't receive dividend every quarter, you receive dividend every month, which is pretty good. I mean, honestly, it doesn't make the whole difference to me, but many people get nuts about that. So this is why the company is so famous. But if you don't know this company, let's check out their investor presentation. I will talk about their business. This is uh, from December 2022. First of all, Realty Income is a commercial net lease. What means? It means they own and rent out commercial properties. A typical client is not a person, is a company. And the net lease means that they rent out the apartment, basically just the wall. The tenant will take care of maintenance, utility, taxes, whatever and they will not do anything. This is a good choice because they reduce as much as possible their headaches because they don't need to do the maintenance. And also with the fact that the price for maintenance and utility of a property uh, are fluctuating during time, the fact that you leave this to the customer it uh, saves you from uh, high inflation, for example. Of course, you ask a lower price, this is clear, because uh, the tenant will take care of everything, but anyway, it makes the, the business much more predictable and safer. If we dig a bit into the presentation, we see we are talking about a $53 billion company, it's one of the biggest REITs out there, and uh, oh, it owns more than 11,000 commercial property across three different countries, United States, UK, and Spain. The vast majority anyway is in United States and these are the list of their clients. We are talking about uh, uh, investment grade clients, uh, companies like Dollar General, Walgreens, 7-Eleven, FedEx, uh, Walmart. I mean, we are talking this kind of company. And we can see from this slide that the, their business is quite highly diversified because anyway, the biggest client in terms of revenue is Dollar General, which is accounted only for 4.2% of the revenue. And in the industry diversification, the industry they work the most is accounted for a little bit more than 10% and are grocery stores. So anyway, they don't have all the eggs in one basket. They are quite, quite highly diversified. Maybe the geographical diversification is not amazing because uh, even if here they split uh, United States in the, with the different states, at the end, the vast majority of the market is United States and we need to consider as a one single market with the UK accounted only for 9% and Spain for much less. But let's talk about numbers. So let's again go on Coifin. This company increased the dividend, is a dividend aristocrat, increased the dividend from 23 years in a row. So much higher than the 15 years that was my target, uh, with a quite decent uh, analyzed growth for 5%, depends on which uh, year we take into the account. If we go on the dividend yield side, we see that at the moment it is 4.65%. And uh, this is the five year chart. It's not very clear to us uh, how it is comparing to the average. It looks like in average with the last five years, but this information we can get on Seeking Alpha. If we go uh, one moment in the dividend yield chart, in the dividend yield scorecard, we can see that the four year average is 4.2% while the actual dividend yield is 4.65. So yes, actual dividend yield is higher of the five year average. And this is a sign of undervalued stock. Let's see also the safety of the dividend. Again, the payout ratio calculated with the adjusted fund from operation, which it tell us 76%, which is anyway lower than 80% that was my, uh, my target, my bar. Yes, the company satisfies my criteria. I consider this company cheap right now because of what we saw right now. And uh, this is another company I own and is already part of my portfolio. And when I have some money, especially when they pay dividend, in their case monthly, I reinvest this dividend inside the same company to increase my number of shares. 
Third stock I want to talk about is Digital Reality. This company entered in my portfolio just today. I opened my position. I never talk about this company in other video. This is the investor presentation released in November. Uh, this is a data center REIT, means their business is to own data center and rent it out to tech company basically. We are talking about more than 300 data center across the globe. This, you can see here the distribution, 60% of them is in North America, so anyway is uh, very much exposed to the North American country, but this is pretty normal. But they have a quite a big diversification across all the country, you can see they are in all continent. If we see the type of client they have, uh, as you can see, we are talking about top names in the tech industry, IBM, Oracle, Meta, LinkedIn, which at the end is Microsoft, Verizon, at TNT. You know, these are the type of client and we can see that their top 20 client are accounted for around 50% of the revenue. So it's pretty good diversification from my point of view. Let's take a look from the number point of view. Let's go again on Coifin. Is it a dividend aristocrat? Yes, 17 consecutive annual increase uh, with a nice annualized growth, 4 5%. And we can see right now that the actual dividend yield of 4.81% is uh, much higher compared to, to the average of five years. I mean, the, it's almost an all time high. Uh, this is a very good information for us because it tells us that the stock is trading very low. And this is what we are searching. We are searching for a strong dividend payer with a remarkable track record, a good and safe business, which are in some moment of low price. And this is when we need to open the position. Payout ratio, again, we don't need to check this one. We check the, uh, the one calculated with the AFFO, which tell us 77%. 77% is not a great number if we, talk, if we see that my bar was 80%. But if we take a look at this slide right here, we can see that this is the AFFO payout ratio divided by year. We can see the history of the payout ratio. And we see that most of the time this payout ratio was way higher than 80%. So even if 77%, how much was 77% is not amazing, it's very close to the 80% bar I put is still lower than the average of this company. This is why I consider it still good. The company, yes, is cheap from my point of view, and this is why today I open a position. This will be a new stock in my dividend portfolio that I will talk about also in the next videos when I will update about my portfolio performance. Let me know in the comment what you think about this three company, or if you have some other company you want me to analyze or you want to discuss about, just leave it a comment because I always reply, and see you to the next video.